Dang, I didn't want to hit them. You are going to. You'll be firing this way, and you're firing at a large creature. Okay. So you don't need to move. Uh, uh, I'll just fire again, then. Does 15 hit? No. Well, you're not 15, you're just 15. <laughs> no. No? Okay. You got plus 13, man. Uh, he is losing a grapple, so he doesn't have a secondary body for his team. No, he's winning grapple. No. He's winning grapple. The octopus. Oh! oh. oh. He has a what? He loses the dexterity bonus game too. Oh! Because he can't dodge out of the way when someone is wrestling. Yeah. And what'd you get? 15. <laughs> 16? 15. 15, no. Off the natural armor, I guess. Yes. Yeah, because I know it's large, so. Yeah. Well, I don't know what else I can do, so. Um, somebody comes up from below deck, and it is Talos Stormus. Matt? I'm mad. I'm mad. Oh, you already put him on there. Yeah, but I gotta move him on that. So, push, push. That is the glorified. Alright. If you want, you can use your battle music now. Okay. Alrighty. I'm still getting crap rolls. Yeah. It's okay. That's not when I rolled for bitterness. I okay, rolled I'm saving that for when we really oh, you don't need want good to know bitterness. I am already bitter. <laughs> I rolled an 18 on it. I'm bitterness. Because I have to handle it. Oh, have you met Faye? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean I can't be bitter. It's like, it's like no, every time someone on the ship does something, okay, Faye, make a bitterness roll. <laughs> no, she doesn't roll for it. She just gets more bitter. <laughs> She's I was gonna say, she's like a 40 at this point. She's there out of necessity. <laughs> <laughs> so and you she recognizes how awesome you are as a blade. <laughs> she also, um, she also does recognize that you guys are strong, so that's helpful. But she doesn't respect anybody's intelligence <laughs> at all. <laughs> right now, know. my intelligence is 10. Doesn't your character at least acknowledge I made a smart move last campaign? <laughs> For the buying of the uh, stuff. And making and buying the ship with the novels. She is probably more on well she's probably more on the uh, she's on like the side like, of like we should have just left him behind. Oh, okay. Left who behind? And ouch. You're you're just gotcha. like uh, well, the melon lord behind. after he attacks the uh, after he attacked the melon stand. I don't think it's advantage is what it's for. But no, no, it's it's cold. I said I'd talk about when it's cold. I'm just trying to get this guy set up here. So enjoy the metal pirate music. Ailstorm. Look up Ailstorm. Bang. Ailstorm? Ailstorm. 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 Pirate rock song. Oh, he can do this right now? Yes, What's funny is that when I summon a creature, almost everything I summon can be either fiendish or celestial based on my alignment. I'm evil, so it's going to be fiendish, which means pretty much any animal I summon has smite good. I could summon a pony right now. <laughs> pony! <laughs> Every a fiendish pony. Alright, so Stormus comes up. Smite. <laughs> Have you met my pet rat? The is feeling conflicted about certain life choices. <laughs> Alright. Talos yeah, okay. comes up and he prays up to the sky. Talos, Lord, guide us. And then a dark cloud start forming overhead. And then a lightning bolt comes down lightning and bolt, strikes bolt. the giant octopus. He cast a spell. Scared. He cast a spell. Woo! Yeah. Call a lightning storm. I'm just curious. Wouldn't it hit Andy's character as well? No. No. Okay. It's I mean, a single five foot space. So. Oh. Okay. I just. No, I'd like to imagine it does hit I the mean, octopus, like, and it the just like it. Like, it does hit real. Andy's character. It just does zero points of damage. <laughs> no. It just the, travels through. No. Comes back. <laughs> the lightning bolt just like circles around him, and it's the octopus. 
His actually, shield is so good that it's like protects him from. Technically, the that would work because um, Saint Elm's fire on ships was based on the fact that there was metal, and when the lightning hit, when, because of the, the the circumstances on the sea, the lightning hit it. It created giant balls of what looked like fire. So there's be several balls of fire surrounding him right now. Hmm. Also, interesting Science. to note. Goodness gracious! Great balls of fire! <laughs> also, something right. to note for William Katner. I think cats in the real world are like four times more likely to be struck by lightning than dogs. X! Can we? Give it one. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ew. Ew. All right. So I'd like to imagine that Tadweed's knife does the same amount of damage as a bastard sword. My what? The, the tail knife tail? The tail knife? No, like his cooking knife. Oh. Because basically, Katner. Katner is, that's Katner, not Cadweed. I meant to say Katner. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I'm going to take my pistol and use the uh, the, the flint the flintlock uh, yeah. starter. Pick up and grab one of the rockets I have. Mm -hmm. The, the fireworks? Yes! <laughs> Shooting fireworks. <laughs> is that even a <laughs> stat I can use? Or I can make this I mean, up? It's a, it is an improvised weapon, so yeah. there's a penalty to the attack roll. Minus two? I think it's minus four for improvised weapons. Technically, his character is an expert at this. Actually, yeah, but it's not designed to be a weapon. Like, you're good at smashing things. So if you picked up a brick, you could use that as a weapon to help smash you well, to help smash things, but it's not designed to be a weapon. Even oh, though I get a, I get a plus good. one bonus on this because I'm a firebug. Oh yeah. Mm. Um, I'm gonna have so to it's... roll DMBS. All right. What's next? Given the way this campaign going, those last two letters really nice. fit in. Oh, and I also get another plus one because it's uh, less than a range of thirty. So it's total minus two to the attack roll, plus whatever your regular bonuses are. And I'm going to throw it, so I get a plus one! You're not throwing it. No, no, I'm throwing it because I want to ex it to explode. Ah. Okay. Also splash, so one point of extra damage, too! Yay! So Wait a second! <laughs> that hurts splash! <laughs> How much extra damage do you get on this? No, plus one. Okay. So, if it hits. roll to see if you hit. Alright, so I'm getting plus three to this. Plus my range attack. I'm throwing it. Mm. All right, so twenty-five. Yes, you hit. Twelve points of damage. Dang. <laughs> and he's dazzled for a turn. You need to dazzle somebody. Uh. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Pass me that brownie. No one. And I'm just moving one. I'm not even sure where all these snacks are coming from. It's just like every time I look up, there's <laughs> slightly more from somewhere. Do you want some? Nah. We we have right. stromf cookies, chocolates, brownies, and buttermilk ranch pretzels. I'm trying to watch what I'm eating. I'm gonna say you should try. All right. I took one. one of, at least one of these cookies are really good. Right. I took. Right. Sorry. I took one five foot step forward, and I'm shooting with my crossbow. Again! Eight. That's eight plus two for range, so a total of ten. This is more than ten. Shot sorry, dude. Dang it! It's like every shot, it's like. I think my character might be drunk. Oh, okay. This is not penetrating the flesh. I'm going to but it's an octopus, it's squishy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, Wait! No, no, I know <laughs> what's going, going on with my character. He's still angry Time. at... Oh. My character's still angry at uh, so, well, Mason again. for bar me. So he tries to hit both Mason and the octopus, but ends up hitting neither. 27. He beats you. Mm. Mm. So now he's grappled. Yep. All right. So then it's space <laughs> turn. <laughs> okay. How fast am I climbing down? Just said I was forty feet up before. 
You're down. Okay. Well, I'm within range. So, I'm casting uh, Ray of Enfeeblement at this mm -hmm. thing. I should probably get the rules for that up. Probably. Yeah. So he has to make a fortitude save. Right. Everyone roll perception and close the door. All right. Beat the octopus. Leveled up. We've made it to Windfall Outlook. Eighteen. Ten. Ten. Wait a minute. Yeah, that three. I rolled a 19. I see. My perception oh, modifier is plus one. One. No, wait. One. I rolled a 14. Okay. Uh, Evan, Andy, Sebastian. Your characters notice that it is a very, very colorful town that is on top of a hill. It has windmills in the background and what looks like a flattened out plateau where so you think the Dutch. farm <laughs> mills are. But buildings are smaller than usual, and that's pretty much that. You notice that there's a section of the city near the port area where the buildings are bigger than the ones on the upper side of the hill. Right. You also notice a large amount of giant birds flying around the sky. Yeah. Yeah. I know some marketplace. I push my <laughs> no. I push my hat down on my head real hard. Alright. In case of bird poo. Yeah. So when you get if off If a bird gets too close to me, I'm just gonna blow it away. <laughs> a halfling walks up to you, a very important looking person has a trench coat, and says, How long will you be here? Uh, we're just uh, using this as part to resupply. We're on our way out to Ravenglass. So only about one, two days, perhaps. Alright, well, just use the, look for a local tavern. They'll be able to get you in. And, in uh, that'll be ten silver to dock. Uh, I'll pay him the ten silver. It's not right. much. If I can no, find my stab silver. Stab him in the face. Start. Get all the town guard on us as soon as we enter. <laughs> Is that proposition? No. <laughs> you be parking your ship and firing Do you want to our neighbors. <laughs> Do you want me to test out my new spells? <laughs> uh, also, Kevin, kind of roll perception. Once again, disfiguring touch. The target becomes disfigured. <laughs> I'm a dwarf. So little detail. So much fun you could have. <laughs> that, that's just the general description, oh, okay. not the actual spell. Eleven. Perception is eleven. All right. You notice two very different ships are docked in the bay. One of them is how much? What is that again? What did you get? An eleven. Okay. Uh, two of the ships look very familiar to you. One of them is a normal um, pirate ship, similar or ship similar to yours that is very decked out, and another one is an ironclad. I march over to the ironclad one. All right. I I tell to the crew, or I talk to those two. Go wherever you wish. Keep the dwarf under control. I could cast Feast of Ashes on him. <laughs> Target right. starves with an insatiable hunger. <laughs> <laughs> Put right. him right next to a mountain stand. Alright, walking over towards the ironclad. Alright. You notice, um... Prisoner... No, I just gave it away. The crew members are looking at you and kind of nodding their head in a kind of a salute mm. fashion, saying, Captain, Captain, Captain. And you see a very important stormtrooper. You see a very, um, an elf 
um, with a quarter staff talking to some people, and he's wearing a red coat. All right. I uh, I just make my way there and say, Top of the morning. Top of the morning to you, Captain. Do you remember who I am? Yes, Williams. <laughs> Uh, hmm. I. Alright. Ooh, this is this will be good because I'll use my alter ego name. I, Lawrence Edgerton, never forgets a face. Names he does forget. <laughs> well. <laughs> I am the captain of, well, the now captain of this so-called vessel. It's... He got kind of gets close to me and whispers, it's me, sir. You're, this is the war art killer, the prisoners, the... I Lewis. understand. <laughs> okay, like Mr. Weeks. Lewis. It's been like two weeks. <laughs> A lot has happened, Mr. Lewis, John. I can magically stitch Lewis. lips shut. Who? I can. <laughs> That's Why are my witch spells so cruel? <laughs> I don't know. Wizards get like rainbow shot and like grease, and sorcerers get other, and which is like so mouth shut, disintegrating ray. It's like. Bloody skeleton. Bloody skeleton. It's All right. like, what the frick? Alright. Uh, so, how's the ship? Oh, the ship is good. We managed to uh, get here safely. Uh, it held up well onto Nassau, and we got it refitted and everything else like that. So it's been um, all all good. All right. Uh, yeah, mind if I come aboard? There's a uh, new business venture I'd like to talk to you about. Right away, Captain. Come this way. So right. you, you go into the Ironclad, and you go to the back where the Captain's quarters is. And there are... It's cleaned up well, and... It's still very simple, but it has most of the relics that were there from the original British area. Animate and possess your own skin as if it were a separate creature. That what? Is scary. That's terrifying. Uh, remind you... me never to get into a fight with you ever. Remind... Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Why? Remind me never to piss you off in general. All right. Who makes these characters? <laughs> Who makes these classes? Right. Uh, people like us. <laughs> And then after that, there's like really basic stuff like stabilized powder, and that ammunition from a firearm is less likely to misfire. So, what are you guys doing while this is going on? Um, I'm actually, I'm gonna roll perception to see. Uh, can you actually? I'm gonna see if I time. notice that the ironclad is the ironclad that we captured earlier. I'm gonna see if I know that. I'm guessing roll perception. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just start wondering. Nineteen. Off. Yep, that you do notice that that's the ironclad, and you also notice that he's wandering off. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I immediately um go down into the rum cache, lock it, make sure it's locked, and then I'm gonna go to the ironclad. I am going to. Well, I'm noticing. I'm noticing that he's wandering off. So I'm going to wander around the city and look for magic stuff with the tech magic. Obviously. Really? You and guys are gonna trust me? No. I'm going to employ the logic that it is somebody else's problem. <laughs> <laughs> if we get a repeat of Barney, we're leaving you here. <laughs> the guys are like finishing their first beer. We're leaving again. <laughs> Kush -kush. <laughs> <laughs> so you just discus throw it. That's where Kush Kush comes from. Discus? Yeah. Right. Well, it's in ultimate, you go Kush Kush when you want the pass. <laughs> nah, I just go, hey, I'm open. But everyone knows. It's not fun. Yeah, everyone knows. Knows. with no Kush Kush. <laughs> it's mm. a dumb thing. Yeah, out of character. My dwarf senses are tingling. <laughs> <laughs> so, I go off one. <laughs> go off what? 
Wandering. Okay. He rolled a 20 on his wandering check. <laughs> Steel breath. Pull the breath from a creature's lungs, dealing damage and leaving it unable to speak, use breath weapons, or cast spells with verbal components. Oh! I'm airbending the air <laughs> from your lungs. <laughs> We should. Uh, this is level three. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's level two spells. Second Even level. worse. Imagine what level ten is. The spells only go up to level nine. You get them every level nine. You every die. Level, <laughs> level, level nine, nine is just Let's like. Let's see how I should kill you today. Mass apocalypse. Should I send you to hell? Should I make the ambition that you're going to heaven, but in reality you are going to hell? All right. Inflict critical wounds, mass. Deals 1d4, no, 4d8 damage plus 1 per level and affects one subject per level. Yeah. Pulse death. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, Storm of Vengeance. Storm rains acid, You're lightning, and well. hail. <laughs> Extremely well. Tell right, me when I make right. it to the ironclad. One more. Or am I there already? One more and I the spell. Suffocation mass. One level, one creature per level suffocates to death. Yeah. That's just say at level 20. No saves, no defense against that whatsoever? Okay. There's definitely a save. But if you fail the save, it's going to be like, oh, hey, I'm not breathing anymore. <laughs> All right. Oh, the hole right. you. <laughs> so. There is an interesting uh, bit of business at, at Bardney that you missed out on. Yeah. You missed some pretty interesting uh, stuff yourself at Nassau. I war be that uh, rum guzzling Mwaji again. A <laughs> nearby crew member goes... <laughs> <"Pass> <laughs> <out>. <laughs> well... Mr. Muaji, we docked in Nassau, and he managed to get us the requirements, and then we hit the tavern. He hit it harder than most of us. Combined, oh, I Oh, dear Tiles. <laughs> and he managed to attack an orc that was there, and one of the workers, and he covered him in paint from what it seemed, and then was screaming at him. The guards, um, well, what's left of the guards in Nassau arrested him and just threw him in the dungeons. That's the suddenly last they we hear, heard of. Suddenly they hear a voice, Thank God the room will be safe! <laughs> and we had to leave before he spewed information that we were with him. <laughs> Best cut your losses and run, I suppose. <laughs> However, it was a very <coughs> profitable business venture for ye. Oh, really? Aye. So Ironclad was originally meant to haul prisoners. We'd be doing just that. But there'll be a catch. On the Isle of Bardney, there'll be a single tavern and inn. Run by a man by the name of Joseph Inderbrook. Through a process that I well, can't well remember or describe, he has a plant that uses dead bodies to make the sweetest tasting mead that he ever did drank. But he does need the dead bodies. So, here's what we're going to do. I can't show my face in Bardney again because of that blasted dwarf. <sighs> How convenient you are. <laughs> so I'll need ye to act as a go-between. All right. Uh, just whenever you're full up on prisoners, head over to Bardney. Now, am I at the iron? Yes. Okay. We'll get you there in a minute. Here in a minute. Now... Uh, preferably, they'll need to be dead, so that way they don't struggle or scream. But f what you need to do first, find Joseph Inderbrook, tell him that Larry sent you with a crate of berries. He'll pay you ten silver for every body or crate that you bring him. <clears throat> now, 
he might show you the exact place you'll need to bring him to. So what you need to do is first kill, um, well, what, what did we promise? Like a tenth of the prisoners would go free as slaves or? 20%. 10%. No, it's 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%, so one tenth. All right. Now, first off, just pick out the 10%. Because of a deal I made, pick out the uh, 10% of the prisoners. You can go off. Uh, you can keep them there. You can go off to Nassau, sell them as slaves. The rest of them, them you kill in a well, particularly easy way. You just slit their throats or run them through with a cutlass. I don't care. Kill them so they won't struggle. But they, it works best if they're fresh. Bring them discreetly to the place he'll show you, and just hold on to the payment for me. I'll give ye, say, uh, uh, he gives me ten silver a body. For doing this, I'll give you, uh, let you take two silver from every payment per body. So that then, so then I get paid eight silver for every body, and he gets two. I think. Do I need to make a roll for that? No. All right. There's a spell that's like a summon monster spell, except that instead of summoning a monster, you vomit forth a swarm of spiders. <laughs> I did see that one. And then I think there's a. <laughs> and then there's a creature that keeps its young in its throat and as a breath attack can spew out its its uh, babies to devour a creature and then just sucks them all back in. Alright. He says, much obliged, Captain. Alright. That'll be all. Now, if you'll excuse me, me dwarf senses are tingling. Understood, sir. Well, what are you doing on the ironclad? Alrighty, I'm gonna immediately. I'm just gonna go down quickly to see if the prisoners are all. They're gone. Oh, they they're all gone. Already? Slaves. Oh, they're sold as slaves. Okay, never mind. Uh, I'll then go off the ironclad. Okay. So and then I'm gonna. When you go to Skinwalker Form, you don't get a light attack, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that make you Captain Crouch? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Says the captain, that's who! Aye, oh yeah? Aye, 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 aye Captain Crunch! <laughs> well, he, gains a I... he gains a bite attack when he goes into skinwalker form. I'm just going to... I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to the local tavern bar place thing. Tavern bar? <sighs> tavern right. bar. Which tavern one? Bar. Uh, whichever one seems like it's the... Not necessarily the most run down, but the more like, the more shady deals go to that tavern. Whatever ones those may be. And if there's multiple ones like those, whichever one's closer. Well, you go down to the area where the taller buildings are, and mm -hmm. these were especially made for the taller folk, because Windfall Outlook is indeed a gnome settlement. A gnome and halfling. Oh. So, you notice four different taverns. The Tall Tall Tavern and Inn, the Toadstool Pad, the Greyhound, and then the Lickety Picket. Uh, which, which one's closer? Which one of them is closer? Both are non negotiable. Doesn't matter. Which pick one? Uh, the Skibbity Picket. I'm going to go the there. Picket. Lickety Picket. I'm going to go there. What does it look like on the outside? Does it run down? Is it nice? Well, Ragged Flagon. It was made for... Drunken Huntsman. Yeah. Tall Lickety people. Picket. Tall people. I wanted Tall to name it Lickety Spigot, but I didn't know how to spell Spigot, so I just went with Picket. I think I'm you're going looking for Spigot. I'm going to go into the... <laughs> I'm going to go into the middle of town and then cast a spell which peels my skin off of me <laughs> and it walks around. <laughs> so you become the Colossal Titan <laughs> if someone casts a large person on you. It's terrifying. <laughs> Alright, five clerics use large person on Evan. He becomes to colossal size. And then he skins himself and starts smashing Hobbit towns. <laughs>